Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Comrade Zero Spike back again once again. And today, people, today we're here for Osama Sentai King Oja episode 47. And in this episode, the gang comes back with freaking a vengeance. And we also learn the origin of Girori and wow, of Gori. We learn the origin of Gori and also we see where he ends up at the end of this episode, which is very well freaking deserved. And kind of i was i like <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it we'll talk about it but in this episode we see that the fury of the gods has has started to become a has started to happen again and we see that the rest of the team they try to take on gordy but we see that's when big man doug dad comes in and he explains a lot and throws some more lore dumps on us and he says that the Bugnarok are actually aliens. The Bugnarok are not from Terra. They are actually from another planet that Gordy himself actually destroyed. And the, uh, the basically Jeremy's ancestors came from that planet and came to Terra and they've been here ever since. And that was a huge lore dump and i feel like i was just that little tidbit right there i just feel like we should have knew that a little bit earlier i feel i mean we're, we're like in the end game now like <laughs> we're just now no understanding that like the bugnarok have been here forever and not all the and the, and the history of the bugnarok probably happened no you know it happened on terra or maybe it happened on their planet and you know that whole war thing that happened on their planet did it happen on their planet first and then they came here I, or or maybe i'm just like or maybe it still happened on terra maybe it happened on there maybe that did happen on their planet like the whole die org and everything and you know like maybe that did happen but anyway anyway <laughs> I, I don't know for sure don't quote me on it i don't fully believe that yet but anyway we're gonna get to it so in this episode we see that now that doug dad has thrown in that huge lord dump he tells uh gordy that hey gordy is up there like hanging on to one of the got one of the um cicada or are, are they aphids i'll say this i'll say they're aphids but yeah he's hanging on to one of the aphid shoe gods and they're around like getting ready to destroy but getting ready to destroy terra but we see that um the team has ba has basically had a plan this whole time. They've made this plan to basically save everybody. No casualties at all. They made a plan to save everybody. So they have this uh, you no know, contingency plan to where we are going to evacuate every single uh, every single person on Terra. Basically, every single person, every single nation, and when they evacuate them, they're going to take their castles and their castles like sink into the ground. And when their castle basically sink to the ground, all the people go down underground into Jeremy's kingdom, which is the Bucknarok kingdom. And all the people take refuge there while the rest of the team is handling everything that's going on on the surface. So, like, we see this whole plan go out where everybody has their own part to play, which was really cool. Everybody had their own part to play. Everybody was everybody had their own thing that they had to do for it. So the plan could, you know, completely execute. So after they ended up um getting everybody underground we got a really nice um scene with uh with raculous and this woman um she was in a wheelchair and this woman she seemed like she couldn't get around as fast as she you know could you know so she sees raculous and i'm thinking that oh man she she knew right well she should obviously know raculous but she doesn't want raculous to help her and in this episode, we kind of see Raculous going through a little thing of him trying to, you know, have, like redeem himself. And we he even got a scene where he, you know, he talked to the uh, Shogodam uh, soldiers and stuff like that. And we see that he's really trying to like redeem himself and atone for the stuff he's done. And while that's happening, we see he's talking to the, with this woman, and she's doesn't want him to help her. And she says that my, but during the first Fury of the Gods, you know, my family was killed. Like she said, she lost her family. And I, I guess that's how also how she got in a wheelchair. And she said, I lost my family. And on that day, I died. And he was, and Miraculous got on his knee. And he, she said that, oh, well, because of the, that happened to us because we were abandoned by the king. Like the king abandoned us. Like he left us. And that's when Miraculous apologizes for what happened i guess he was apologizing he most likely was apologizing for um 
his father's actions, Himagira's father's actions, and he apologized and her and, and then you know him and Gira really like reassured her that it's going to be okay you know like we're here to help you and they reassure her that like there are new kings and things have changed like we're not the same as we used to be so we see that Duga basically evacuates her he takes her away and that's when we get this cool brother uh henching together and we see Gira end up giving um Rackless back his uh Ulta caliber and we get the bros and they end up transforming together and it was really cool i liked it it was really cool how they see that they got um they end up transforming together and then now that everybody is you know all the people are safe and everything we see the rest we see everybody kind of get together everybody hinches up and they we basically go into king oh we go into our ultimate you know king older form and they just start they go basically go into orbit and they start like well not orbit but they start you know they start blasting all of our uh, the cicada shoe gods and they end up blasting the one that gordy's on <laughs> and we get into a climactic you know battle with gordy and gordy you know he grows the giant size and stuff like that and they ended up defeating him and when he dies he laughs about it because he's like oh so this is what death feels like ah oh, cool and he ends up dying and we get a scene where he's in the afterlife Gordy's in the afterlife and it looks kind of different like I didn't think it would look like that I was also like okay Gordy's dead this is obviously him when he's dead so like is uh, are you gonna see the other jesters here because you know it's, uh, some other just like you know Gorma and freaking Hottie Bell are dead so I mean Manon God is frozen but like the other two are dead so I was thinking like are you gonna see them down here like is that how it's gonna work so he's like yeah he starts to smile he's like yeah it's quiet he said, this is death on his quietest people. And then he starts hearing like the the sounds of spirits. He starts hearing the woes of spirits and stuff like that. And he starts to freak out because they're too loud. And he starts to run away. And I guess that's just going to be his eternal uh, torment. Because, you know, Gordy likes quiet. He likes, he likes peace and quiet. He likes to sleep a lot. So that right there is basically his eternal torment. And it was funny. I was like, yeah, yeah. Now you got to deal with the... Now you got to deal with the woes. He's probably going to meet a bunch of people that he's killed down there, too. Maybe. I don't know for sure. Could that look like hell? And most likely it is hell. But yeah, man, that's that's the that's the ending of Gordy. And I'm kind of I'm here for it. I'm like, yep, all that's left now. I'm not counting Manangan, but because if you if they they got to find a different way to take out Manangan because he's like he's like, you know, like uh, uh, the scapegoat for it. Duck Dad, he's like the scapegoat. He's like, if you beat Duck, if you beat Manangan, you know, a new Duck Dad is gonna come out, and we don't need that. So, but uh, yeah, Gorma is gone, Hotty Bell is gone. So right now, only on right now, I'm not counting Manangan, but right now is uh, Kamajin, and it seems like we're gonna be fighting Gordy. I mean, I'll fight Gordy. We're gonna be fighting Duck Dad in the next episode too, and yeah. But then we see the team; they get together and they're just like. And um, he, you know, is like, yep, we did it. He said, we did it, guys. No casualties. Everyone's alive. We saved everybody. And I was, and they're like, yeah, we did it, cause like, oh, this is awesome. And that episode ends off right there. We end up also getting a, a really nice scene with Jeremy speaking with uh, his like Bugnarok, like speaking with the Bugnarok and talking about all your life, like all y'all thought about was like eating and like eating and destroying things, right? And now we're go he's taking his kingdom and he's taking the Bugnarok in a new direction to where he's trying to get them to like have like emotions and like care about people. And we see all the people of different, you know, nations and stuff like getting along together while they're all down there in his kingdom. And we see that the Bugnarok are actually starting to become like, you know, sentient, more sentient people, which I really like. And is is it was a cool it was like a cool little thing because we saw no we also saw in the other episode he was teaching them how to mourn their dead like when bug and rock and stuff die and stuff like that like it was teaching them how to mourn their dead so it's like jeremy's on this big path of really really trying to change the perception of bug and rock and like the whole thing which is which is working it's working slowly but it, it is working and now that gordy has gone we're not we're not gonna get a bunch of zombie freaking bug and rock and, and other things like that so that's cool 
I, I really enjoyed that scene because Jeremy's my favorite character and I, I love seeing him do stuff <laughs> but uh yeah and on the whole thing about the Buck and Rock planet like in a way it could make sense in a way in a way it could make sense because I know like back then like, when Brackless was a kid I don't think you know, Bug Bugnarok were a thing, and they were considered like the enemy and stuff like that. But it wouldn't make sense that Bugnarok are like aliens or alien species, because it doesn't seem like they would that would happen on. They would exist on a pl They would exist on a planet. I I know Terra's not Earth. It's not Earth. They have to, They've been to Earth. Like it's not Earth. But I still feel like like when did. I want. I still want to know when did the war happen? Did the war happen on Earth, or did it? Did the war happen on Terra, or did it happen on their planet, and then they came here? Because Bug and Rock live for a really long time. They're bugs. Like they live for a long time. But yeah, I'm. 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 I'm most on the fence of it happened on Terra, because you know, uh, Death and Rock used to talk about all the time about how they used to rule this. They they were on the surface and they went to war with them and then stuff like that. So it's like all that could have happened when you know, all that still most likely happened on Terra, but this episode had me choked up a few times, especially when Raculous was talking with that woman. Um, that kind of had me choked up a little bit. Like, this episode was great. This episode really hit me emotionally. Like, <laughs> but, yeah, like, it, it, we just got a huge, we just got, like, some huge lore dumps. Like, we got, I, I felt like we were gonna learn all that stuff about Gordy, like, when he went to sleep in this flat, in the had a flashback but no nah, like Doug that was like no nah, I'm just going to tell y'all right here right now whatever you know but yeah man it seems like Doug that really don't give a duck about that like he says when he killed when you know he created Gordy to like destroy things he created Gordy to destroy stuff and he ended up destroying the he ended up destroying the bug and rock planet and when he destroyed he basically he says that the bug and rock asked him to do that and I'm like, why would they ask you to destroy their planet? That doesn't make sense. And maybe I'm seeing it in a weird way, but he said that. And yeah, Gordy just has just been like, you know, he will. He is a walking corpse. And then Doug that say he did take him and fill his body with bugs. That's why the that's why he had all those shoe got souls inside of him, because like they're like dead bugs. Like, you know, he's essentially uh, he's essentially Oogie Boogie. If you really want to think about it, like it's weird. It's just the bugs inside of him don't move like that. But still, um, yeah, man. But this episode was cool. This episode was dope. It got me choked up a bit. I did love this episode. I love the teamwork and the planning stuff they that they, they, you know that they had put together. And I just want to know, like, when did they do that? Like, we kind of it's it's a it's another off screen thing. But at the same time, it worked, and it like they did it kind of seamlessly. You know, like they really didn't have like that big of a trouble doing it. So it was dope. But I felt like one of the I felt like Comagen probably would have intervened in that or something because Comagen ain't done nothing in a while. But like I felt like he would have tried to intervene or stop that or notice that or something. Like that. And then can Doug that see everything? Doug that can see everything that's going on. So how didn't he see that and then, and then and, you know, interfere with it? You know, like, <laughs> I mean, like, cause there, cause he can see everything. So it's like, how are they able to do so many things under his nose? He should know like every single thing that they're doing, no matter how private it is. Or maybe he's just choosing not to look, you know, maybe he's just out there chilling. Maybe sometimes he just chooses not to look cause he's that so full of himself and egotistical. He's just like, I don't care what they're doing. It don't matter. I can just snap my fingers and pop them, you know, but other than that, uh, you guys let me know all your thoughts about this episode down in the comment section below uh, thank you so much for watching make sure to like share subscribe hit that notification bell as it remembers I always say guys stay hinchant